Sorry, introduce yourself again. Victoria. Uh, Victoria. Trey. All right, Trey. So these guys, it's th this is my living room tour. I'm on my way now, and uh, these guys are driving me, chauffeured. And mm -hmm. and say again where you're where you're taking me. Drake it, Massachusetts. And Drake it that's with right. a D. Mm -hmm. That's right. Drake it. Yep. That's if, that if sounds you... fake. If you spell it, <laughs> if you spell it, people will say Dracket. Dracket yeah. Mass. Sure. Yes. Okay. And what is is now is Dracket Mass where they burn some witches? Were witches burned there? Um, no, it's too small no, for that. No. 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 Of now, some people don't believe that this is that the living room thing is real. But is there? I don't know how to convince them. But have we ever met? We met last no, night. We met, we last met in night. person last night. But prior to that. Oh no, we're live. Okay, hi what? everybody. Yeah. Hey, it's a living room oh. tour. I want to start by thanking Victoria and Dre and her family, Victoria's parents, who you already have met, their children. Uh, hi, Maya. It's <laughs> Maya, who you've already met. And um, here's the thing, everybody. Three of half my audience has already seen. I did the show in Boston last night. Half the audience has seen the show. That was everything I had. That was an hour and 20 minutes. Do you know how long it takes to work up an hour and 20 minutes? It's a lifetime to have an hour and 20 minutes. And I already worked it up. So Maya, you've seen everything. Did you like the show last night? Yeah. She, did, she said yes, in yeah. case you didn't hear that. Um, all right. I, the, I don't know if these are really jokes per se, but these are things I've been thinking about. First of all, I have, we were just talking about phones on the way here. Mm -hmm. When you give your kids phones, when you not give your kids phones. I just want to say, I wanted to finish this thought that, that I was talking to you about, Trey, which is that, and you're going to love this, I am pro giving kids phones. You know why? Because the only time my daughter will talk to me is through her phone. And I mean in the same house. I will text her outside, I'll literally be outside her doorway and I'll have a longer conversation with her than if I knock on her door. So I recommend it. And the thing about kids, it, here's the, here's what, do you, do you guys ever talk to Siri and ask her for stuff? Do you ever talk to Siri? Sometimes. You do? Do you talk, how do you talk to her? Do you, are you nice to Siri or are you kind of like mean to Siri? See, I think everybody talks to Siri in a really rude way. We're like, Siri, open up my podcast, please. Because she don't listen. She doesn't, she doesn't. listen. She's but she, And this is why I think that robots are going to turn <laughs> on us. Because we're so rude to them. Hi, you guys. Come on in. Hey, babe. How's it going? You live here? Hey. I'm John. I'm, I'm doing a show. You're, everybody just made me dinner. You can leave the door open. Nadia's Nadia. Hi, Nadia. Nadia. <laughs> uh, dinner was delish, <laughs> by the way. You saw it before. I'm Nadia. I'm trying to do some uh, comedy, but I don't have a lot left to give because I did an hour and a half show for your parents and your and your sister. Did she tell you anything about the show last night? No, she slipped over. Oh, you slipped over to friends. She's just so coming nice in. Meet you. Yeah. So far, you still have more words than Maya did when yeah, she first Maya met John. Yeah, I was Trump. a little nervous about, about that. Anyway, I, what I was saying is, do you ever talk to Siri? Sometimes, yeah. Are you mean when you talk to her or are you nice? Do you have manners when you talk to Siri or are you just like, do what I tell you? Do what I tell See? you. See, everybody does that. And when we have robots, everybody's going to be just as rude to the robots. Yeah. And then when they become sentient... They're going to take yes. us down. Yeah. Yeah. Not, and for that reason, because we're rude, so start being nice to Siri. <laughs> Thank you, sir. There's only one person who loves my stuff. Um, I think, also thinking about children and technology, I think that children, you guys, are going to look back on this time as like, you're going to tell your grandchildren, like, can you believe it? They drove around in these huge metal things called cars. <laughs> curling it down with the only thing that separated us was this yellow tape down the center of the highway tough crowd okay <laughs> um, who's samantha lair 
Who's Samantha? Oh, that's my cousin. Hi, Sam. Uh, she's my cuz. I have some stories about her that I could tell. <laughs> oh. I won't. I won't do it. I won't do it, Sam. Let's meet our people. Hi, what's your name? Maya. Maya. And do you live here? Do you know anyone here? Yeah. Okay. Because these people, the these people say they don't know you. Came in the back slider. All right, Trey. Who, who, how much of this did you prepare tonight's meal? I didn't do a damn thing. You didn't do one thing. <laughs> no. Who, who did the most preparation? Okay, Victoria. All right. Will you tell us what you were having today? Mmm. Mmm. Baked potatoes. Baked potato bar, so you can load it up with bacon. And, and the chives Chai from the pool. From, from the, the pool. Yep. Here's something that I'm talking about cars. Do you, I just want to talk about self obsession and people who are really into themselves and they're really proud of themselves and they're they're they have no idea what they look like to others. And the classic example of this is the guy, the old man in the Porsche. Oh, you guys ever yes. see an old guy in a Porsche? Usually... I'm normally you know, yelling at him because yeah. he's in the way. We don't have them in Drake. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have Porsche out here. They oh, do old have... They, oh, old man! man. Oh, yeah! <laughs> get, get, get this guy off the air! This is my opening act. The thing is, is the guy pulls up, right? And, every, and he thinks, in his mind, He's lived for this. He saved his money. He's got this car and he's so proud in his hot rod and everybody else is looking at him and he thinks that they're all looking at him because of how cool he is. But everybody else is looking at him thinking, God, look at that old man <laughs> pretending he's cool in his Porsche. <laughs> and I will argue that the only people who can pull off a Porsche, really pull off a Porsche, are women or gay men. Those guys, fine. But a straight dude? No, everybody's going to think you're an ass. Sorry, kids. Um, oh, you know, I, okay, so I wanted to talk about the same sort of thing when people are just caught up in their own thing and they don't know it. I was at Wells Fargo Bank in uh, Los Angeles, and I was behind this guy, and I had, I had had a rough day. I, this was this was a while back, so I was you know I was just trying to get through the day, and this guy in front of me is waiting to turn left, and he hits his left turn blinker on Fairfax. Fairfax is a four lane road in L A. In L A. you don't go left on a four lane road. There's never it's so much traffic. These guys don't know. No, they, they don't, don't have traffic. This is the toughest audience I've ever <laughs> ever worked for. Do you guys ever deal with traffic? Have you ever been in a traffic jam? Yes. You have? Okay. Yes. When? When was that? At school. At school? Oh, when everybody's dropping them off. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, no. You're talking about people traffic jams. No. Oh, no. These are cars. Cars. No. But there's so <laughs> cars. many cars. And this guy is going to make a left turn, which means he needs to clear over. four lanes of traffic. The, 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 I couldn't believe it when he did it. Everybody behind me was just like, what's the guy doing? Turning left. Four lanes. <laughs> To find a gap like that, that it comes once in a lifetime on that street. You were never gonna find room to turn left on that in, in Los Angeles. No, forget about it. The way that gap would have to start is all the way back in China, a butterfly <laughs> flaps its wings, which gets in the way of a guy and he can't deliver a box, which slows down a shipment, which then might causes a boat to run late. The boat comes all the way from China to the harbor. They load it off late. A guy in a truck gets, gets it going and he hits a red light. And that starts the gap that then works its way up all the way from the harbor. Boom. The gap comes. No. He drops his head down and the gap happens and he misses it. And I, I, I can't believe it. And I honk my horn and I just do a love tap. Just like a, hey, pay attention. Not a, I didn't lean on it. I just went, boop, you know, go. And the guy goes, here, I'll be him. He goes like this. 
Whoa! Oh, that hair! And then he takes off! But now there's no gap! Now there's cars, so people are stopping. He takes off left, and I'm like, God, that guy's out of his mind. So I turn right, okay? Because that's what you do on Fairfax at rush hour. You turn right. That's your only option. What do you do? Good, next time you're in LA. Mm -hmm. So you t I turn right and I'm driving my car and I see in the rear view mirror, that guy now does a full U-turn across <laughs> four lanes of traffic. People stop and comes up and is coming up fast on me oh, no. and really fast. And I'm like driving and I'm like, oh no, no, no. And I get caught at a stop sign. He gets right behind me. And I, I immediately unlock my doors because I'm nervous. And this guy gets out of the car and he comes up to my window and he goes, don't honk at me. And he hits the window so hard that it's going like that. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like pretending I'm like, you know, looking at his license plate like I'm going to do something. But I, I, I was just terrified out of my mind. He gets back in the car. He drives away. And... I, you know, I went on this, my brain started to think about this guy, like, what is this? What, what happened? Is he a jerk? No, I don't think so. I think he had a really hard day. I think that he, his, he had to go to the bank. He tried to deposit his money. The bank wouldn't let him deposit his money. He had his rent due that day. He was running late. He got in his car. He wasn't even thinking. He had to turn left because he had to get to work. He was running late. And he, he just hit turn, hit left turn, didn't even think about it, that it was Fairfax. And then he realized he's at the bottom of the barrel. He's on it. He's so upset. His life is going so poorly. The only thing he needs is his sunglasses. Because in Los Angeles, you have to have sunglasses. This is not optional. Everybody has sunglasses. And so he opens up his glove box and the sunglasses fall out because his glove box is broken. And he leans down to get him. And some jerk behind him honks the horn at him. And he's so, oh, and at first he just reacts and takes off and all these cars stop. And then he starts driving. He goes, that guy shouldn't do that. Why was that guy honking at me? And he turns back again and goes up to tell me, but he's so upset. He hits the window so, so hard. No, you're Victoria's father. Was she a good child growing up? <laughs> growing up, not growing up. She was when did she turn on you? I love your shirt. I'm gonna get a shot of this. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Is this true? You saved his life. That means your soul belongs to her now. You're her slave till the end of time. Right? No, sorry, no, no, sorry. She got married. <laughs> okay, okay, final thing. I know this isn't really stand up, but um, okay. When I was in seventh grade, we had the. Are you, what grade are you in? Going into fifth. Fifth, sixth, ninth. When I was in seventh grade, we did. At, we had to do this thing called cotillion, okay? And here's what it was it was horrible, horrible. We had to dress up in suits. Did you have cotillion? No. Okay. I don't know why. This is Kansas. I don't know why they had cotillion. kind of like an East Coast fancy thing, right? Or like a New York Southern. Thing. Yeah. It's a it's Southern? It's Southern. Yeah. Okay. So, cotillion. This is what it was. Seventh grade boys who are just very uncomfortable creatures in general. <laughs> dress up, right? We had to wear ties and everything. And you would go to this place and there would be these two ladies who were sitting there. First of all, I was such a nerd and at the bottom of the barrel, I, the fact that I even got into Cotillion is beyond me. And the reason was is because Jeff Ronning, who was even nerdier than me, was friends with me. But Jeff Ronning's sister was a cheerleader, Beth Ronning. <laughs> and Beth Ronning and her mother were friends. You know how when daughters and mothers are best friends? So no. they, yeah, good. <laughs> They're best friends. So sh that's how Jeff and I got into Cotillion. And here's what would happen. You would show up and you'd come to this table and Mrs. Ronnie would be the, hi, John. And some other mother of some other cheerleader would be there. They were very popular, you know, their kids. And they would give you a dance card. And it was 11 dances. 
the first and the last dance was already filled out and the middle dance was also filled out. But the rest of them were blank. And then you go into this room, it was a hotel ballroom, and you'd have to walk around and ask girls to sign your dance card so that you would have a dance with it. And this is what girls would do. If you went to a girl who was above your level of popularity, she'd go, no, <laughs> and you'd just be like this. And then you you go way down below and they'd go, yeah, yeah, I want a son. <laughs> and so you kind of found this equilibrium of popularity of where you stood in the, in the status of your school. So I was like close to the bottom, but you kind of find the people that you had and that's how you would survive the cotillion. Now. At the bottom of the barrel with all of us was Danielle Prezant. Danielle Prezant was the most unattractive girl you could possibly imagine. She had braces, she had glasses, thick glasses, she had hair pulled back. She was very, she was friends with us, but she was very nerdy, very skinny, very, you know, just, and she, and she was, you know, in our group over one summer something happened to Danielle <laughs> Prezant. It, it's unbelievable. And we hear stories like this all the time where people change that quick. She got her braces off. She got her glasses off. She developed into a, a woman. She comes in to Cotillion. She's like a model walking across. And all of us nerds down at the end were just like, is that Danielle? And she, and it was amazing. And so Danielle is like, now she's like, and she walks in and of course, all the people at the top, the popular people, they all want to talk to Danielle now. Oh, Danielle, hi, Dan. And we're all down here at the bottom going, okay, this is it. One of our own made it up there. She's going to bring us up, you know, with the football players and the cheerleaders and everybody. And so Danielle comes down and we're waiting for it. We're waiting for it. And she just walks by <laughs> and just ignores us completely. How soon we forget our roots. <laughs> All right, that's it, I think. Let me see if I have anything else. You better be uh, awfully nice to the little people on the way up. That's right. You meet the same ones well, on the some, way down. I have down. something else, but it's not appropriate. <laughs> we can uh, have them go upstairs. That's oh, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I think that's where we're going to stop tonight. I'm sorry, I wish I had more, but I did an hour and a half <laughs> last night. Uh, thank you so much for dinner. I hope that